Hello. Welcome. Welcome to ship a React storefront in five minutes. I'm hoping you came because either you love developing in React or you love shipping storefront experiences to consumers. So uh, this is part of BDC Commerce under the Commerce Cloud product line. And I am Drew. This is uh, my third time presenting at TDX, first time in an employee t-shirt. Uh, I was so excited I matched my shoes to the t-shirt because uh, this is going to be awesome. So let's get into it. Um, first thing, you've probably seen this forward-looking statement a few times now. I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to talk about roadmap and things that are going to be released very soon, but please make your decisions on what is publicly available now versus uh, things I may be showing off in the next 20 minutes. So um, why APIs and why React? Why, why are you here? Why are you interested in, in seeing my 20 minutes of presentation? Um, we are interested in supporting uh, API-led experiences using open source technologies like React because we see all our developers wanting to have more flexibility in creating bespoke experiences without any limitations. Uh, we have teams who want to have more agility and shipping experiences whenever they want without any limitations and measuring those changes to the front end right away. And finally, uh, we want to be able to reuse our technologies and skill sets from other projects. So a lot of developers may be working on Vercel or Next.js or using Angular or Vue. And uh, when you start on a Commerce Cloud project, ideally you can use the same technology stack and it feels familiar in the first couple of minutes of using it. So um, we are going to be uh, looking at uh, two parts of the Commerce Cloud product for BDC Commerce. One is called the p kit. This is what we call a Progress Web App Kit. It is a starter store based in React that is open source and it will get you started by pre-connecting to all the Commerce APIs you need to have a standard shopper experience. We will take that and deploy it to what we call the managed runtime. The managed runtime is where we will gladly host your storefront based on PDO Kit on Salesforce Public Cloud so that you can offload all that operational burden and cost to us. We love doing infrastructure and networks and operations uh, and uh, your team can do other wonderful things and leave that to us. So we'll deal with the security. We'll deal with the traffic spikes during holiday season. We'll deal with all the security patches. And uh, we will deploy your code with your new changes for your front end uh, un under 60 seconds. So it goes live globally. And you don't have to worry about, how do I handle DevOps tomorrow? Because you can just have that today. So um, the, the evolution of Commerce Cloud. So uh, traditionally, most of our storefronts have been built in what's called a commerce-led approach, which means your front end and your back end are usually deployed on the same system. Uh, that is where most of our customer sites are done today, and it's worked really well. We have over 7,000 sites doing this mode. And uh, if you are used to working in BC Commerce, it's uh, something called storefront reference architecture. More and more of our customers are shifting over to the API-led architecture, which means they're trying to separate out the front end from the back end. And in this case, you kind of uh, bring what you call your own head. This is called headless commerce as a general architectural uh, principle. And in the Commerce Cloud case, we have over a billion API calls during holiday season powering this mode. And we see everything from in-store client telling apps to uh, native apps to uh, custom front-end storefronts built in a bunch of different technologies. Where we're going next as an industry is what we call composable and connected. Uh, if you have not seen the VR demo in the back, that is a great example of a connected and composable e-commerce journey. Uh, you could see probably the guy with the VR headset stumbling around trying to knock over things. That is a connected composable journey where you start on a, on a website like PO Kit, you transition to an Oculus headset, you get a bunch of messages from the sales cloud about a sales guy trying to sell you this awesome car, and then you get a bunch of email messages tuned just for you. You're combining multiple systems from Salesforce and Commerce Cloud plus third-party ISV applications to build the end-to-end -end consumer journey. And that gets really hard as a front-end developer. Where do you even start with that? Uh, how do I have to learn all these systems? So that's what we're trying to address today is um, the hard part about getting started as a front-end developer is uh, I actually don't want to learn and configure all these APIs right out of the gate. I just want to touch React code and get started. So you have to get access to all these APIs, have to figure out how to fit them all together. They may have different auth structures. And then I have to learn about, you know, instead of one single system, I don't have to learn about like five or six different systems and API styles. So let's defer that pain and just start learning the front end code so I can convince my team to go use this new type of storefront. So that's my goal today. We're going to do a couple things now. Um, I'm going to show you how to get started just in your browser by looking at the code. Uh, and we're going to do this by looking at um, a kind of a web based browser. This is, uh, we've seen more and more web based browsers. Since PDI Kit gets generated into a standard Node.js project, you can run it in any ID that you want. In this case, um, this is in, uh, in, in something called Gitpod. 
Uh, and you can see that this looks like your Visual Code Studio Editor, but it's totally in the browser. Uh, you do not have to go actually install anything. Uh, and this is great if your team just wants to try it out without having to install all the dependencies. And I'm going to show you one thing here. I'm going to show you our, our upcoming version of PDOI Kit. So we shipped uh, a V1 version about, uh, I would say, about seven, eight months ago. We went GA, uh, and it was great. We had a great beta period. And so in this V2 version, we're working on a couple things. It's a fancy new loading screen for local developments. We have a brand new set of CLI tools coming out. Uh, we are supporting server-side and client-side hot reload, which will reduce your development cycle locally. And we are adding support for TypeScript. So if you want to code your project in TypeScript, go for it. I, I hopefully have some TypeScript fans here, because that's, that's a bunch of work for us. If you want to see what's in the V2 announcement, there is a shortened link there uh, to pwd-v2. That'll take you to our developer preview. Um, we shipped developer preview version 4 yesterday. So if you want something fresh uh, and that no one else has touched, you get the first access to that. So um, if you want to come try this with me right now, you can pull up a laptop uh, and actually hit this bit.ly URL, and you will land in the same workspace as I am, uh, which means you can also totally mess up my demo by typing in some bad code. Please save that for another five minutes. But for now, we're going to try a few things together in a browser if you want to code with me. We're going to navigate the code structure PDA kit. We're going to add an alert banner so you can see what our component infrastructure looks like. And then we're going to preview those changes, all without having to do anything on my machine other than open a browser window. So let's do that. So this is our project. I'm going to kind of explain our project structure a little bit. So like I said, it is a node project, so you have your standard package JSON. Uh, I've called this project our TDX22 PDI kit project. And in our case, we're going to look at our code structure. We have a bunch of default configuration files. I'll get into that later of how we can reconfigure the project for different deployment scenarios. But today, we're going to go modify the front end and just add a couple changes to the home page just to show you can see how quickly that's done. Uh, the home page is running on um, a dev server. It's, um, I want to say it's a local dev server, but it's not because it's running in a browser. So if you go here, you'll even hit our, our uh, browser ID. It's going to launch uh, a dev server for you. And you'll see that this is a fairly standard website. This is what you get out of the box by uh, typing in one line. And so from there, we are going to go navigate to a couple different parts of this. All their stuff looks like a React project. So in this case, you have our theming files. You have a bunch of our uh, components in there that are React components. You'll see a large list of them that you could use. Uh, and we have anything from React context, higher components, and hooks. In our case, I'm going to look at the pages. And I'm going to look at the index page of the home page specifically. So JSX, if you know React, you will see JSX uh, files everywhere. And uh, in our case, we're actually going to add in and import an alert component or set of alert components from an open source component library called Chakra. So Chakra is very mobile friendly and very accessibility friendly. Really good for commerce because accessibility to mobile really matter in commerce. So I'm going to uncomment that. That's going to import those components. And then I can now render those components by just adding in those components directly in my home page, save this in my browser. And if I reload this page, um, generally in a couple seconds, if the demo gods decide to agree with me, we'll see this new TDX banner, which means you can come and hit the same link. And now you're welcome to type in a bunch of code in that browser ID and screw up my demo if you want, because I'm done with that portion. If you want to try something else and change this banner, you can try it right now. Um, go nuts. I may turn off the workspace in about 30 minutes. So. That is a way you could share this code with your team without having them to install anything. And that's good because some, some folks just have like network constraints or security constraints. They can't do it all on their laptop right away. Uh, and so you can always get people excited for this. What happens next? So you like what you saw. Um, you want to convince the rest of your team. Let's go try out what this means from a day-to-day -day perspective. So if you want to try this out locally, we have one single command you can run that will give you the full project pre-connected to our demo APIs and our demo catalog. Um, this is, again, on our developer preview v2 that you could uh, use. I would recommend using node 14 if you're going to run this command. But you'll notice that uh, if I run it right now, uh, let's do that. Let's go run our uh, npx create command. This will take our generator. It's going to answer a bunch of questions that you don't have to worry about for you. And it will then install our dependencies in node. And if I run npm start afterwards, I will just get a brand new project that looks exactly what I showed from the browser-based editor. Um, Let's not wait for this to happen over a conference Wi-Fi. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do next is then modify this local version to see what the local version looks like. Uh, we also have a kind of a secret minimal template if you want to go with like a bare bones template. 
Uh, it is experimental, but there is a minimal application, which is basically just a Salesforce logo. If you want to strip out React and see what can I start with just nothing, uh, you have this other secret output you could also get to. So come visit our V2 announcement. You can check that out. I'm going to do a couple changes. So one of the new features we recently launched is how to configure uh, multi-site in Commerce Cloud. Uh, and so that means if I need to run, say, a store in the US and a store in, uh, in, in say, uh, Europe, um, I can do that by reconfiguring my Peter Kit without having to do any code changes. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that on my local uh, visual code editor instead of on the browser-based editor. And you'll, you'll see what that looks like here. So in this case, I'm going to go to our configuration file uh, and look at two of these two sites. I'm going to do also uh, starting my local dev server. So when I do npm start, it's going to take me to our wonderful boot screen. Here it is. Um, it's our wonderful bear that's going to just build our app in the background while it does things with Webpack and other mysterious things I don't really know about. Uh, we're going to wait, and then it's going to show that same home screen like we see here. That's great. I can now see my changes locally. Uh, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to reconfigure this site to go from a US-based, US dollar currency site to one where I can switch to the Japanese locale in the Japanese market and buy things in yen. And so to do that in PETA Kit, it is now pretty straightforward. So I'm going to switch to another branch uh, just to get the code in the right, right state. Uh, and I'm going to go to our multi-site branch. So what I've done here is to support multi-site, I've changed the way we generate our URLs. We're going to include the site and the locale in our path now. And that helps because if you have a single domain but multiple regions, that will make uh, the ability for your shoppers to find your site a lot easier. The second one is we're going to reconfigure our site's configuration file. So in here, by default, we only supported what we call our reference architecture storefront in US dollars. We now added a second configuration that says, let's go turn on the global storefront with the German market, the UK market, and the Japan market with their respective currencies. So you can just flip this mode on, and you can then restart your dev server. Uh, and and I, as I refresh the page that shows up after it does the loading screen again, uh, I will uh, just show you the new version, which will let me browse through the Japanese locale. And you can see how quickly it is to reconfigure your starting PDI kit site to one that works in multiple countries and multiple sites. So give that a second. Uh, give that just a hard refresh to make sure I have the latest stuff. And you'll see here, if I go to the footer, once it finishes loading, um, I can now land on the UK site by default, because I've specified that as my default config. And now I could go to Japan. And so this goes right. I can now browse our site in Japanese. I can go find um, a wonderful suit uh, in, oh wait, no, I went to the wrong one. I cannot read Japanese in case you haven't noticed. Uh, and then I can start adding stuff to my cart, and then I'm, I'm done. I'm selling in Japan. But this is on my machine. I need to deploy this out to production so I can start selling and making money. So let's do that with the remaining time we have together. Get this out to production. So how do we do that? We're going to do that with the managed runtime. We're going to deploy this for the world to see uh, and get it out onto one of our production environments. So the first thing you have to do here is to get access to what we call our managed runtime. The hardest part of this presentation is actually getting access. So if you are a customer, um, you have to go chat with your success manager. Our team will provision you on that. If you're a partner, we do run regular developer instructor-led training every roughly six to eight weeks. Uh, and so I can share a link with you if you're one of our SI partners so you can get on board for the next training round. You will then get access, and you will have to add um, what we call the managed runtime user role in account manager, in which case then you could log in and start creating projects. So what we'll do next is we'll create a brand new project in managed runtime. Uh, we're going to name it the right name so that we can connect our local to, to that uh, actual environment. We'll create a bunch of environments we need, including production. We'll add new uh, project team members so we can collaborate together. And then we can actually set up a bunch of environments. Once that is done, uh, I need to deploy. So the deployment structure for managed runtime involves you generating your own personal API key so we know it's you, that you're saying who you are. We're going to match our package JSON to uh, what we have locally and what to the project we just created. And then we're going to do a two-step process. So first step, is we, we push what we call a bundle. That is our build artifact. And that means here's a new build we could deploy, but we haven't deployed it just yet. The second step is we actually deploy the bundle, and then we, we profit, hopefully. By then, you hopefully have launched a Japanese site. Um, so to do that, we have a couple CLI commands. You could hook these up to your uh, actual CI CD system. And it's really a push command. And you could specify an environment if you want to deploy it straight to production if you're going to be that daring. So in our case, we're going to do that right now to show you what it looks like. 
This is the managed runtime. It is under runtime.commercecloud.com. Uh, I'm going to log here really quickly, and we're going to go to uh, a site that we already have created a project for. So if I want, I could create a brand new project. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to go with this pre-created project. Under here, I can also create as many environments as I want. So if you want to create a new environment for the Japan region, go nuts. It's all meant to be self-service for you. So you can decide where you want your storefronts to show up. So in our case, we have already de uh, have a couple of test deployments. I'm going to kick off this multi-site deploy right here. You'll see that this goes live in production in about 60 seconds. I'm also going to deploy uh, that new build that I had, which I flipped on the Japanese currency, uh, by actually going out to do our push command. So but you see uh, uh, npm push command. Uh, we're going to push this command here so that we can see how quickly it gets uh, a new build up onto managed runtime. And that means our new storefront with multiple sites can be live in just a matter of minutes. So let that do its thing. In the meantime, I'll explain what's going on here. So I click the Deploy button. You could click that button or call our API or run our CLI. In the background, we're creating a brand new instance of your site. We're going to stand up a brand new CDN, and then we're going to switch it over. Uh, to do that, um, you can set up your environment any way you want. So if you wanted to, you could set up your own domains. You can also flip over to our uh, different regions. And you could do things such as set up additional proxies if you have any course concerns. Uh, and that's all up to you. We try to get out of your way. And so that is where we hopefully see that new deployment that just went live. I had a push it real good message, because that's what we're doing today as the new build. And this build should go live in just a second. Um, you can do other wonderful things, such as turn on project notifications to get emailed when a new deployment goes live in production, or you could add additional team members to collaborate. So that's all available in this managed runtime interface. Uh, and that means you can now have this React storefront live in just a second. So uh, while that happens, uh, that is going to take one more second. Hopefully, I get the success message there. Um, the other thing I'll note is uh, while it checks the CDN and just does its homework, we have a couple more sessions tomorrow. Uh, we have just shipped a React storefront live to production, which is awesome. If you want to learn more about Commerce Cloud, tomorrow we do have some DevOps sessions to further extend our chat on how to deploy things. Uh, we are talking about how to build and deploy templates in every industry. We can customize the underlying APIs that we are integrating with with hooks. Uh, that's going to be an amazing session. And finally, we do have a, a super session for connecting Commerce and Marketing Cloud together. So please come to these ones. Let's go check my deployment's done. It is, this multi-site has now been deployed. It is uh, build number seven. And if I hit this site now and just refresh to make sure I get the latest cache, we are switching this one over from the US-based site to now the UK-based multi-site, which should have the Japan locale now selected. And you'll notice that this is now in production under our production domain. So within that last 20-minute span of this talk, we've generated a new storefront. We've edited it in the browser, edited it locally, and deployed to a production environment directly against our commerce APIs. Hopefully, that shows you the speed and the power of this. And uh, if you want to check it out further, we have one final set of resources. For those who love photos, um, this is where we're going to send you. Uh, if you want to go to our new developer center, we just migrated this to developer.salesforce.com. All our docs are now with the rest of the Salesforce developer docs, which is awesome. We feel like we're now truly part of the family. Uh, we have Peter Kit as open source GitHub project. So uh, that means from day zero of when we launched this, we want to make sure the community could see what we're doing in this project. And uh, we are love to hear about feedback, uh, bugs. We definitely love bugs as well. Uh, we will fix them. And also any community pull requests, we have been taking a few on the way. And that's amazing. We want to see more of that. Finally, we have migrated a bunch of our developer forums to our Trailblazer community. There's a new B2C commerce developer community. Please join us there uh, as part of uh, the Trailblazer. And uh, we also have a, a, a community-driven Slack channel a Slack instance where a bunch of the developers from partners and customers hang out. If you want to talk to your peers in Commerce Cloud as developers, um, you can go to this community and get um, connected to the Slack group. It is not part of Salesforce, which means it is completely agnostic to us. So go hang out there with your peers as well. That is where you could find us. Check out these links. Try those commands locally in your machine today if you want. And if you want to come talk to myself and my peers, we'll be at the Commerce Cloud booth tomorrow morning. Or you can chat with me now if you want to talk about Peter Kit or Manage Runtime. Thanks a lot. Hope that was exciting to see how you could deploy React really quickly.